Hey, welcome to Travel Bubble and to Key Kolka, or Key Kolka, I keep saying it wrong. Uh, we're here on this tiny island in Belize. It's a little bit expensive, but it is beautiful, and we'll be showing you how we got here and just what we've been getting up to on our short trip. So to get here to Cay Colca, we took a bus down to Chachamal from Tulum and then we got a taxi to the border, which we didn't want to do. We wanted to get a taxi to the bus station and then a bus station down here. But as usual, taxis are a bit of a rip off and a bit of a con and he took us to the border and charged us extra. Anyway, then we got a cheap bus from there. It was like an old American school bus. It was pretty cool. When it rained, there was a river down the middle of the bus. Um, and it, when it wasn't raining, it was really hot and busy. Um, but it was quite a cool way to arrive into Belize City. We arrived just before the last ferry over, so decided to stay there the night. And then we came over here um, on the first ferry the next morning. We have just arrived to Key Kolka. It is absolutely beautiful. Uh, the streets are just sand patches, basically. Look left and you can see the ocean. Look right, you can see the ocean. Yes, paradise. So we've just gone for a quick breakfast. We've got these, which are called fry jacks. They're like a local food. Um, it's like a dough where this one's got beans, chicken and cheese in it, which apparently is what locals have. And you've got uh, something egg else. Egg instead of chicken, breakfast one. Uh, we're going to get back to the accommodation because it looks like it might rain a little bit and get our breakfast in our bellies. We've stayed at Tropical Oasis, a small hostel with good facilities for a tiny island. Our little shed cabin was perfect, apart from the mess. We could cook at the outdoor kitchen to help keep our travel budget out. This north part of the island is affectionately known as the split. The island behind us used to be connected and was split literally in half by a hurricane in 1961, I think. If we get it wrong, put the correct one under here. And uh, there's Lazy Lizard behind us, which is kind of like a beach bar to chill out. There's no cars on this island, so everyone's riding around in golf course. It's super hot and super beautiful. There's not a whole lot to do on the island itself, as it is very orientated towards uh, places to stay, food places, snorkel places. I think it's all kind of going off out doing snorkeling, which we're looking forward to doing tomorrow. The island is very easy to get around. From chilling at Lazy Lizard to wandering the sandy streets, nothing is far away. You don't need to use a golf cart, but they are available for an additional price. Hammocks are definitely the way to go. Some are free to use if you get a drink or a snack at the adjoining cafe. So K okay, Colga just got interesting. That right there is a mini tornado. There's a storm coming. I want to talk a little bit about the snorkeling tour that we did. We went with caveman tours. We did the half day, which was $35. Uh, we chose that over the full day as basically we're all, well, we're on a budget and also we thought the full day would be a bit too exhausting. It was really good, small group of eight, took us out to three different stops. Stop one was around some of the coral and we were really lucky to see a manatee, which is like a sea cow. It almost came up to me at one point and did a little wave. <laughs> and we'll show you the first stop now. been left on the boat they've gone over there to see a manatee i wish i could be in the water but i'm just i'm so scared so i've seen it from the boat which is lovely and hopefully i'll see some sharks too um the water is really nice and clear so you can see all the coral underneath as well but hopefully adam is getting some good footage on the gopro for you and me
don't worry, Gemma. I was having a great time snorkeling and watching our guide mess about diving into the water. Sorry, did you say something about a manatee? It was incredible to see a manatee in the wild. It's a very rare occasion. We spoke to other people during our stay and some were not so lucky. Our guides were the real experts in the area, but even they don't always find them every time. Stop number two was a guided tour around one of the reefs. The guides are really knowledgeable. The guy we did it with, Chris, he'd been doing it for over 10 years. So it's really good to have it be explained to you rather than just see stuff and not really know what was going on. All the various different fish from like the snapper, eels, rays, and we'll show you that part right now. So we're at another coral reef. I probably sound ridiculous, but we're about to go on a guided tour and see some of the marine life. Can I see the massive it? barracuda and a manatee already. Spring is pretty sick. Let's go! Oh my god, let's go. And he's off on his coral exploration. So maybe I give you a little tour around the boat. And also towards here, you can see where the waves are kind of crashing on the coral. That's a really, really shallow bit of water that they're not going to be allowed to swim over to. But they're currently over here uh, playing around with some barracuda and possibly some rays as well. Um, so yeah, let's hope he doesn't get eaten by a shark. There were no sharks in this section, just everything else. From coral to barracuda to numerous fish species, and even this nosy ear. Stop three was where a load of sharks hang out. These ones aren't dangerous, uh, they won't come for you. Apparently if it's only one dorsal fin, then they you have to be worried. Yeah, well they don't actually have teeth, these ones. They're like baby ones. Yeah, so we kind of swam around and hung, hung with them a bit. A little bit scary and intimidating, as there were eagle rays as well. Um, not too sure how I feel on the whole thing, because they were feeding them with little uh, mackerels. Um, but apparently in, the, apparently in the off season, when there's no, no tourists on the islands, they feed for themselves anyway. But they did come to the boat like they knew they were going to be fed. But I think as long as they're being kept healthy, then that's a good thing. And we'll show you that right now. The amount of sharks was insane all twisting and turning to get some mackerel. Even though we were told that they're not dangerous, it was pretty intimidating, so I definitely kept my distance. The water was shallow here, so as eagle rays swam by, I would have to be careful not to accidentally bump into them. Here, you must remain calm. The sharks come and go and don't bother you. When they've had enough to eat, they just head off. We headed off too, through the split part of Key Kolka. Here we could get a better view of the other part of the island. It's very underdeveloped, having only received electricity two years ago. We stopped off at a spot where a local person had built an area to encourage seahorses to breed, as their numbers had been in recent decline. These fish we saw are now protected after overfishing, so cannot be eaten on the island. However, if you are up for it, you can feed them. Or, if you are this guy, you can feed the birds. So overall, if you are coming to Key Kolka, I definitely recommend some sort of snorkeling. Yes, it is a little bit pricey, but it is totally worth it to be snorkeling or diving, if you can do that, in the and, second um... biggest barrier reef in the world. What was the difference between the long day one and the shorter half day tour? 
So the difference between the shorter day and the longer day is there's just more stops. Um, you can see turtles with the other one. You go to a shipwreck and you go to um, some coral that is uh, a little bit older. A, a little bit older, so maybe of a better quality. Some of the ones we saw were a little bit uh, bleached um, and not as nice as it could have been, but still spectacular nonetheless. So if you are coming here, like I said, I would definitely recommend doing that as on the island itself, there's not too much to do, but that's good, you know, good to just chill in the sun, really, which is what we're doing yeah, now. It's perfect. I love this ghost low attitude. Yeah. <laughs> I love a hammock. <laughs> hammock life. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's been our short time here in Key Kolka. But I think we've had a good amount of time here. Two days is enough time to have a little wander around the island, chill out and go for a, a snorkel as well. So it's been perfect. And now we're off on another long travel day to Guatemala and we'll see you there I'm in the next episode. Out. If you like this video, please like and subscribe as there'll be some more real soon.